Hi, welcome to the video. I'm going to do a quick video today. Um, haven't done a video for a long, long while and this one's a bit different. This is about creating a pattern on glass. And I'm going to look at three different methods that I've been playing around with. Uh, I've had to do some blasting for a job I was doing. Um, so I had to get a kind of set up for doing that. So I thought I'd compare them. First real time, trying the engraving. I played with it once, doing it, but not really a full pattern. And I've tried the etching cream a couple of times. So what we'll do is we'll go through each method and blasting first, then the engraving, then the etching, and we'll talk about the three different the methods and the pros and cons kind of thing of each of them. All I did was create a quick template. Uh, it's on the same piece of glass. It's just a plain three, four mil clear glass. So the glass isn't a factor within the test. Um, the blasting is just done with aluminium oxide, a uh, one twenty grit, I think it was, at roughly sixty psi, just in a wee small cabinet, because it goes everywhere when you do it. Um, just a fifty liter compressor running about nine point six cfm. Really, if you're doing bigger jobs, you do need a bigger setup than that. But just for simple small jobs, it does the, it does what's needed. Uh, the engravings just for Dremel 3000 uh, with just some cheap diamond buzz that you get off of Amazon, Ebay, etc. And the etchings with the armor all, armor etch cream. So the first one we'll do is the blasting and that'll be the next part. When we do the engraving, the video will be speeded up and I've cut bits out of it because it took about 10, 12 minutes to do that. Um, the etching elapsed time was about six seven minutes blasting seconds um so into the blasting we go Started on the engraving side of things, I'll turn my Dremel on. Yes, yeah, a Dremel 3000. I'll we'll probably end up speeding up this bit of the video. But first off, we'll do an outline of the pattern and then we'll come in. Okay, so we've now got the engraved one as well. I'm not. It's only the second time I've used the engraver. I've got another off but over here. But we'll now get ready to do the chemical etching using the armor etch on this one. And my next thing. Okay, so now we're going to do the chemical etching and hold my part while I'm doing this. And we're going to use the armor etch. I think there's only another couple of types that you can find in the open market to get it. It's even quite difficult to get a hold of this stuff and it's not cheap. We bought all of this as a bit of tenner. Um, but you can scrape it off and put it back in the pot. My understanding is though, once you've opened it, it's only really got a shelf life of about a year. Um, I've done a few things. 
with it and we've still got a fair bit left in it. So what we'll do then anyway though is, let me get it on because it needs to sit for a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm going to do a test video to see uh, what kind of length of time you need to put it on, how much you put it on or whatever. But I'm going to do it the way it kind of tells you in the instructions, which is to put it on liberally. You just dab it to make sure there's no air bubbles in it. It basically etches on contact. So you don't really need to leave it in for seen people say 20 minutes and stuff. I'm not sure it does any different. If anything, it becomes streaky if you leave it on too long. I'll make sure I try and keep it in short while I'm doing this. It'd be easier if I could pick the bottle up, but but yeah, I'm a wreck. It's made in the US. You, you do get a bigger bottle on this, I've got one, but it's using up this wee bottle. We put plenty of it on. Again, like I say, I'm going to do a test and see if it really makes that much of a difference because stuff etches on contact, so make sure you've masked off well round about it. And also, when you're washing it off, make sure the direction that the excess is coming off is not going over the bit you've already done or a bit you don't want etched because it will mark it. I've had one where it was like a little water droplet on it because it had ran onto it. So just my fourth excess of my brush. And we'll leave this about five minutes. We'll come back and see. You. Okay, that's been five minutes. -ish. So what we'll do is we'll scrape the stuff off, just the excess with the brush, and then we'll give it a runs. And I just use an old toothbrush just to and about it. So scrape the excess off. Pot. A little bit of an odour from it. Kind of sulfury smelling. I eat raw eggs. Let's get it. Give it a little rinse. Tidy up, get the mask off, and we can do a comparison of the three different types. We can talk about pros and cons of each method. Okay, so we now have all three methods done. I've cleaned the glass a little bit so as we can see it. I'll try and be able to show it a bit closer. So what we have now is we've got the chemical etching, the armor etch. We have got the engraving method. And we've got the grip blasting method. Now, at first view, I mean, I'm not a skilled engraver. That's in fact, it's only really the first time I've tried it. I've only done a little bit before. Um, but first time I've tried a full shape, and it's a wee bit rough around the edges. I'm sure you could get it smoother, and you can use rubbers on them to smooth out this. I mean, it does catch the light a lot, lot better though, a lot nicer um, from a distance. The grip blasting is very even. Um, a little bit of depth to it, and that was only a really quick grip blast. As you saw, you can blast a lot deeper. There's a little ridge. I can just feel it my finger there. And the etching practically leaves no ridge. As you can see, this is against a little bit of black paper. The difference in how the light catches on it. You'll be able to see through it. Oh, excuse. So seeing through it. Again, for me, for my eyes, I like to get a blasting finish. Um, I'm sure the engraving one, though, with a lot of skill, you can get much better effects. Well, you can than you can ever get with the grip blasting or the arm, the chemical etching. I mean, chemical etching, it does what it does, and that's it. That's it. You don't get any 
variations in shade or anything. It's basically that's the shade you get and you're done. Good thing about the chemical etching is very, very simple. You basically just need a mask um, and throw the stuff on it. You can do it in your, at your kitchen. Just put down some coverings. It's relatively quick. It takes five minutes to etch. Like I say, it is permanent and it doesn't scratch off. Um, it's not deep. But it smells, the chemical's quite expensive. It's hard to get a hold of. Um, but for simple, I mean, I'm not talking about doing professional stuff here, but for simple gifts or whatever, it's quite nice. The only other thing I will say, and it didn't come out too bad here actually, is with a chemical action, you can get it, it can be quite blotchy on bigger areas. Um, I can see it a little bit, you probably can't see it in camera. But it's like water marks, it's in it. Maybe just pick it up ever so slightly. It's not that even a finish when you're doing bigger areas. It's quite noticeable. And it's not just as sharp, it doesn't pop out as much as the other methods. The engraving, again, anybody can pretty much do it. You don't need a lot of equipment. If you've got any kind of rotary tool, it doesn't need to be a Dremel. And you can pick them up for 20 odd quid. Um, the little tools, the bars and stuff aren't dear if you're just doing basic stuff and you're not industrial engraving or trying to sell things for hundreds of pounds. You can get a decent enough wee finish with it. That's just been a rough finish. Uh, like I say, it can smooth down a lot more, but it's harder. It takes a lot more skill to get the curves and to get smooth edges. Uh, you do create a bit of dust. That's why I use the little water droplet to try and keep that down and to keep the tool cool. Um, but it's nice, I quite enjoyed doing it, I'm going to try a bit more. And you can get tons of effects with doing it, you can do it in shading. Um, so say you wanted to follow the lines of the shell that you would naturally. You could just draw them on with your Sharpie or something, draw in a line. And then follow it, carve deeper, um, and stuff like that, quite easily. And then with the grip blasting, you obviously need, well for this, as you've seen in the video, I've got a little blast carb in it. That was about 90 pound. You need your grit. For this, I used 120 grit aluminium oxide. And I was running about 60 PSI. I don't know what that is in bar, sorry, but it was about 60 PSI. Um, you need a decent enough compressor. You'll get one for about 100 odd pound. It's a 50 litre. You can't do big stuff with that. It just runs out of air. Uh, sandblasting uses... A, about 10 CFM cubic feet per minute of air um, you really should have about 150 litre 100 probably very minimal um, for doing it to a bigger scale but for this kind of size it's fine a couple of passes the compressor kicks in and it'll go again but you're talking about a couple of hundred pounds worth of equipment to get going in it and a, it's messy obviously this if you're going to try it Try and do it in an enclosed space because honestly, you think you'll aim it away at something or into a box, it goes everywhere. Everywhere. Um, but if you've got a little cabinet and you want to try it, it's a really nice finish. You put your mask on and away you go. I've just done, say, a simple design here. I just wanted to show a side by side difference. Each of them have got the pros and cons. Simple. Do it at home on your kitchen worktop. With next to no equipment, as long as you can cut a stencil, you're away. Engraving, again, pretty simple. Not just as sharp, probably takes a bit more practice. That's easy. Um, and grip blasting, you need a wee bit of kit to do it, but it gives a really nice sharp image. Um, again, it can be a little bit uneven in places, and you've got to be careful what you're doing. Um, there's obviously dangers where you if you're going to use play sander stuff, Use a mask because you can get a silicon dust, silica dust, sorry, kicking about the place, which is really bad for you. Um, but I like the finish of that, but like I say, a wee bit more capital expenditure. Natural 3, side by side, I'm going to do a test of the Armour Edge because I've heard people saying it does it instantly, so it doesn't matter how long you leave it on. Leave it on too long, it goes blotchy, put it on thick, put it on thin. Move it about, don't move it about. So we'll maybe do a wee test piece of that and see how it goes. Anyway, hope you liked the video. Any questions on anything I've done here, uh, please feel free to ask and I'll try my best to answer. Cheers now. Thanks for watching.